Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So with the Black Clover Mobile being indefinitely pushed back, uh, we found ourselves a new game to play and that is Tower of God New World. Now this one is in early access for the Philippines and it's releasing on the 26th for global. Now the way it's going to work is, uh, and this is gauging off their discord uh, is that it's a multi-server game now bear with me when you hear multi-server but essentially this is going to be like server one and then when global launches they're going to open up server two once it gets full server three so pretty much so on and so forth now i know a lot of people when they see multi-server games they just like straight walk away and go oh yuck multi-server the great thing about this one is and i like this multi-server system especially in these type of games for one reason alone it's that you, whenever you start you're competing that with people that started around the same time as you however guilds and friends are cross server. So all the important stuff you want to do with your friends, doesn't matter what server you're on. However, when you're competing in arena, pushing, you know, the ladders and stuff like that, it's with people who started near you. Yes, whales will smack you, but essentially like it's, it's a bit more fair-ish. That's what I like. I like the multi-server thing, but essentially this one, you know, by the soft launch, you're not like missing out because the only thing you miss out is maybe your guild's a bit better if you team up with the early players, but it's a six day difference. It's not terribly bad. So this game is essentially an idle game, which I know often with games, uh, let's just jump into combat and take a look. Uh, actually, I'm going to get smacked in that one. So let's go over to this combat. But essentially with idle games, normally when I play them, I say, if you don't like idle games, this game won't change your mind. That's what I normally say. In this one, if you don't normally like idle games, but you like the Tower of God uh, franchise, I think it's worth giving it a try just to see. Me personally, I love idle games. So, you know, it is what it is. But Tower of God, uh, they this is done by Nebmarvel. So a lot of the feel you get like in the story mode uh, and stuff like that is very similar to that of um, Seven Deadly Sins Grand Cross with the way they do it. It's a very Nebmarvel type feeling uh, game. And I think it's really well presented. So that's what we're looking at in combat. You can see you've got the yellow bar. You build up an ultimate and use it. You can put it on manual, do it manually, which is, if you're pushing, you will do eventually. But, uh, you know, it's, that's the gist of combat. As for the characters and designs, I think it's absolutely fantastic. We'll jump into characters, then we'll go through all the different game modes in it. But essentially what this is, it's taking, it's taking the core model of AFK Arena, put in a bunch of quality of life and done some like things a little bit different in the gearing system, dupe system and stuff like that, which I really appreciate it. So I think it's done really well. So if we go into characters, first of all, rarities, we have SSR plus characters, which are your highest rarity, then SSRs, and then we have SRs and Rs. Now, I think SRs will have some viability. I've been looking more into the SSRs personally because I've only got so much time before I start making guides before the game's launched to try and help new players out. Um, but essentially... SSRs are the ones you can wishlist. So SRs, you just get randomly and then you can dupe them up and stuff like that. So I'm not too stressed on that, but you know, those are the main rarities you have. These guys are super rare, uh, but we'll talk about the summon system in a sec because I'm on like day two of my account and I'm at 190 summons already as free to play. And at 200, you get a free SSR plus. Unfortunately, it's not a selector. It's a random thing, but still pretty nice. But you know, characters in general, when you look at their progression, you've got gear. Now this is looking fairly standard idle gear where I don't think it's got any random stats or anything different pieces have fixed stats but i'll look more into gear a little bit in the future now on top of that we do have exclusive equipment now i love what they did with the exclusive equipment in this game because a lot of other games that do this they copy uh you know the same model where it's like you've got to get a certain amount of dupes of your character before you can unlock this however this game has a proficiency system where essentially every time you take them into battle they gain some experience on this proficiency and as they level up you get gems and you also get stats and once you max this out you get um their signature item which is really really cool and if you can see here, you get items along the way, which can level it up. And the other cool thing is once you've got someone at max proficiency, they just get these books uh, when they clear battles so that you can put more proficiency into other characters, which I think is a fantastic system. I absolutely love it. I think they've done a fantastic job of that. Moving on from that, we have the limit break. Now, this is your duping system. So every time you have a dupe of a character, you can limit break them one of, their, one of these three skills, which is their three sort of sub skills and then once you've upgraded all three it will upgrade their um their ultimate and then give them a constellation so they got this constellation system essentially uh and i haven't brought a character to max so i could be wrong on 
some of these takes. Essentially, I think it's basically three dupes for each constellation upgrade up to this one. And then this one might be four based on the size and this one's six. So I'm not too sure exactly at what point each one, like exactly how many dupes, uh, but I'll find a chart and when I do a beginner's guide, I'll show you. But essentially to get to this green three star, you need three dupes. To get here, you need three more, three more. You get the idea. You do need a lot of dupes in this game, but the way the stat weighting works, I don't think it's going to be as crippling not having dupes as other games, but we'll have to wait and see. I'm not 100% sure on that. So there is a heavy duping system like in any idle game. Uh, and then obviously we have this friendship and as you increase their friendship, send them gifts and stuff like that, you'll get stats and also gems. Honestly, a lot of free free gems to be had in all these character pages. It's quite nice. Um, so that's it for the characters, essentially. Now let's go through the systems that we have in the game. Actually, let's go to the growth system first, which is a very interesting one. Now we have this link. Now what you essentially do is you upgrade the positional slot of like the, you upgrade the position in battle and then like it this character isn't locked to this position you can swap them around completely freely but essentially it just stops you from leveling a bunch of different characters all the time and then as you swap a character in there they can just take that level and that upgrade essentially so as you can see characters always have to be tw within 20 levels of each other i kind of power level two and then slowly bring up the rest you can also limit break them see this one's c this one's d2 uh, but yeah i'll go through more on that in a guide but essentially it's just a nice balanced leveling system where you level up your positions instead of having to level it up but once again i can swap in combat that level 81 doesn't have to be a front row position i can swap it to be the back row we'll jump in and show you that in a sec but that was a really nice uh leveling type system uh you know good less clutter this way i i, I like it it's not too cluttered this try essence thing this kind of reminds me of the gear re-rolling in um seven deadly sins grand cross where you unlock the stats and basically you unlock it it gives you like a grade and then you can re-roll re, uh, re those stats or you can lock one stat if you want um and then you're going to use this currency that you get along the way to re-roll it essentially so i think that's quite interesting that'll be a, a source of pain for a lot of people but it's got strength dex dexterity and intellect in there you get the gist i haven't unlocked the other two uh systems yet so i'll have to wait and see what they are but let's get into actual game modes that we have obviously it's an idle game you got idle loot that stacks up over 24 hours and away you go now this one has an adventure mode which is basically like campaign in any other idle game you just keep going Finish that one, keep going, keep going, keep going. Probably a lot of players except for Giga Whales aren't going to reach the end because they'll probably introduce new chapters along the way. Um, so that is that one. You just keep progressing through. Then you have a story mode. And then a story mode is very easy. It's impossible to like fail this essentially. But each time you finish a chapter in the main campaign, you unlock a new act in the story mode, which is basically just free rewards. It's just easy. Plays through, it's voiced, all that sort of stuff. So if you want to sort of watch the show through the game, you can do that. Uh, then we have our other core game mode, which is going to be the trial area, which is kind of like towers from other idle games. You've got your main tower that you push, uh, and then you've also got, you know, your faction towers that unlock on different days. And then on Sunday, you get all of them unlocked. Uh, past that, we have Arena. Now, the basic arena is just going to be like um, your standard um, idle game arena. Auto battle, you just set your team, try and ca uh, counter their team, and away you go. The other arena I haven't unlocked yet. I'm assuming if it's like AFK Arena, this one's going to be three teams versus three teams on auto battle. And then this one will be like a, a, a tournament for the top players from this for the season essentially is the way i can see that one working uh then we have mock battle this is going to be your just uh essentially boss battle to get gear you just jump in here challenge the boss and away you go you get some gear um there's nothing too crazy to it but you do want to try and maximize this because early on you, like i've got a lot of like i've got I got two tanks that I use and only one of them still got a full set of gear. So getting high scores in boss battles, especially early on um, and into the future is going to be important. But as you can see, infinite health bars, you keep going through, you get up to different tiers up the top there, and then you get an additional loot box for each tier. I'm going to bounce out of this just because I'm going to wait for the end of the day uh, when I've got my characters leveled as far as they can to get the max rewards. But that is the, uh, the boss battle. And then we also have a labyrinth mode, which I'm not going to jump into because I'm actually doing some testing for a guide 
which is the conquest mode. Cool thing is, in like chapter three, you unlock a sweep mode, sweep function for this, where you just get the reward you had last time. But there is actually decisions in this labyrinth mode on what you want to do. And I'm trying to do the math on it to put it in a guide. Um, because like there's different ways you can do it. You can get extra gift boxes by clearing it fast, or you can take your time and clear all the enemies to get all the extra rewards there. And I'm just trying to work out which one's better. So I don't want to go in and ruin my run for taking notes on that one today. Uh, moving on past that, uh, those are the core like gameplay game modes. Uh, we have agency service center, which is just because loading screens on LD player are really bad. I'm just going to not go into it. Uh, that's essentially uh, your dispatch mode. It's got quality of life. You just go dispatch all, collect all, just free goodies every day, essentially. Alliance is going to be your guild. At the moment, there's only a guild login system and guild shop. Uh, it looks like there's going to be like a guild boss like battle type thing coming in the future. Workshop store, that's where you just get your standard um, store stuff for your different stores. Uh, you got your standard store here that you can buy stuff. You got your alliance store, and then you got this gem store as well. So those are those ones. Uh, as we move on beyond that, the archive is just like, you know, unlock different characters, get stat bonuses, tiny stat bonuses, but it's a thing. You got your ranking board, which is essentially standard ranking boards, but it does give you a lot of free gems through that when the furthest person on your server gets progressing. Um, and that is pretty much all of the sort of game modes in the game at the moment. I haven't unlocked research lab yet, but that's probably a fair look. The rest of the systems are fairly standard idols type stuff. You know, get friends, send friend points, you get some summons. But let's just jump into that summon system. The events, there's only just like a daily event at the moment. There's nothing crazy. I'm assuming we will get more soon. But let's jump into the summons and take a quick look. Now, I'm not going to do my summons. I'm going to do a summon video uh, probably 12 hours or so after this one. But essentially, when we look at rates, uh, you've got the SSR pluses that have the 0 0.033 each. Um, but there is the, what is it, six of them so far. Uh, so, you know, you can still, it, it's very low, but, uh, you know, it's pretty exciting when you do get them. And then we've got our SSRs down the bottom. You can wishlist up to five SSRs. At the moment, I'm just wrote, don't pay attention to my wishlist because I'm just on this account trying to test as many things. So I'm trying to get like a copy of each SSR to test them, um, which is not what you want to do when you guys get your account. Uh, so yeah, that's where we're at there. Um, like I said, we got these pities. So I'm like less than two days in and I'm at 190 summons already. Uh, and then when we get here, we get an SSR plus, which is pretty decent in my opinion. In general, the new player experience and this one has been really solid in my opinion. If I didn't have a stacked account, like I didn't have uh, uh, Karaka or whatever his name is, that guy, uh, you know, I probably wouldn't be as progressed, but in general, it's a pretty solid summon system. Um, and yeah, we'll just have to see how it evolves over time. But I do like the wish list thing. Uh, and you got like one that has the highest rate on your wish list. I, I like it for targeting characters. So that is pretty much everything in the game at the moment for a first look. Like I said, if you like Tower of God, if you like idle games, you'll love this. If you like Tower of God, but don't like idle games, I'd still give it a crack. It may sway you a little bit. And if you hate both, well, obviously you're not watching at this stage. So that is going to be it for this one, guys. We'll have a bunch of guides coming before the release on the 26th, which is like two days away. We're going to be busy. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.